Hello, welcome to War Thunder, I'm Tully, and today we are flying the A6M3 Mark 22 Ryzen. The A6M3 Mark 22 is yet another iteration of the famous Zero Line. The Zero Line begins in A6M2, at least in this game, obviously, there was. This is the A6M2 Model 11. I'm just going to take the shirt off, excuse me. A6M2 Ryzen established a pretty much established a standard that no one could beat. I mean when this is when this thing was introduced when this thing was introduced, it was pretty much outmatched in the Pacific Theater. There was nothing anyone can throw at it. The A6M3 Mod 22 is a slight modification of the original design. It doesn't have clipped wings, which means it sacrifices some of the return rate. However, it does keep the original design. It has, however, a much better engine. However, in order to preserve the uh, weight issue this thing is a greater engine, but it does have lesser fuel. Doesn't really matter though, most battles are over before you come over, get over fuel. Oh god, my nail clipper. Most battles are over before you can, you know, run out of fuel. It's perfectly fine. Okay, let's just take into consideration a few things. This thing is going to be pitted against the Americans and the Russians. And it pre and just like the Key 49, this is the same discussion I had. This thing will lose in the speed department. It's not very fast compared to the other ones, of course. It does have good acceleration and a fantastic turn rate. Rate of climb, not so much, which is exactly why I use this as a low to medium altitude dogfighter, where it completely excels. As for armament, it has two Type 97 7.7mm uh, 7, 7 .7 machine guns and two Type 99 Mark II 20mm cannons. As such, this is the same strategy as I employ with the Spitfire Mark 16. Set convergence range to 250 and aim when you're really close. You're going to be up against a lot of Yaks and LAs. Those things are really combustible. However, I haven't upgraded this thing completely, so I only have access to stealth ammo on my 7.7s, which are front-facing and don't have to worry about convergence. As for the 20mm cannons, don't have the best ones, but still, at least I don't have practice bullets on them. So, to battle! I said to battle. Good thing about flying Japanese is the Qs tend to be very much uh, lesser. They tend to be very uh, faster. Compare the compare please the number of the Americans, especially from tier six to thirteen. Compare the same number with the Russians and the British. Then compare that to us and to the uh, Germans. This is due to the fact that at higher tiers, the Allies do tend to dominate the scene, the scene at least in historical battles. But this is why most of the German players in high tiers go to arcade, because they, at least there they have a proper chance. <laughs> but seriously, in all fairness, the Zero can be, in fact, um, outmatched by certain planes. The Corsair, for instance, is amazing at dealing with Zeros. The Hellcat as well. Oh, it's Americans, Guadal Canal. And it's just like with the Spitfire Mark 16, I'll be playing this in cockpit view. Keep in mind that the Zero is, in all honesty, a naval fighter. This thing is meant to take off and land on aircraft carriers. Unfortunately, since aircraft landing is, let's just say, less than stellar and less than stellarly designed in this game. Let's see, uh, fuel amount, 30 minutes. Uh, I'm just going to have to switch over to, um, you know, act third person view because it's really fucking hard. I've tried. Plus, unlike the Spitfire Mark 16, this thing does have multiple sets of flaps. It doesn't just have landing. There you go. It doesn't just have landing and then uh, raise. It does have raise. Wow, they have more people than we do. Wow. This plane has raised flaps. They are raised, right? They do. Oh, raised flaps, combat flaps, takeoff flaps, and landing flaps. Couple of things. That, my friends, right there is the artificial horizon. The other one on the right side is the rudder. Now, as for oil, do you see six things right there? The one in the center, the one in the center and the bottom. That's your indicator for the oil temperature. Took me a while to figure that out, but never mind. Now, Guadal Canal does pose a problem because the Americans spawn really close to their uh, troops, as you can see, while we don't. Let's just see the lineup here. Ooh, a flying sushi bar! A G5N1 Shinzan and a Key 49 2B Don Ryu Late. So we have two bombers and. Wow! We have an N1K2 Shidenkai. Oh, this is awesome. So, 
two A6 M3 Mod 22 Ryzen, one Fuck Wolf 190 Premium, fucker, and one N1K2 J Shidenkai. On their end, two bombers and two people who haven't actually taken off, and then three fight. I think we might have equal number of fighters, maybe. Problem is, it's really hard to hunt American uh, bombers with this plane. Keep in mind, the zero is just as it was, just like it was historically. The zero is very, very fragile. This thing cannot take hits ever, or else it will blow up, or burn up, or both. It doesn't ever have great visibility. Not as great as the Spitfire Mark 16, which doesn't have all these uh, all this iron around it. But keep in mind, the Spitfire Mark 16 is a much late war model. This is a 1942 model, I believe. 1943, not really sure. The gun conversions. As you can see, those things right there, right? Those things. Oh wait, never mind. I thought you could see those. Never. All oh, right, never mind. Because unlike the Spano cannons, the Type 99 cannons are actually inside the fuselage. Just let me see those. See those holes. Those holes there, in the yellow part. I see. You can see that. Those are the cannons right there. And the machine guns, I believe, you can actually see in the inside. It's this one and this one. These are the 7.7s. I'm just going to go and uh, join my friends there. Now, just like the, just like any other fighter in this game, if you want to execute a tight turn, drop your flaps, and then hit the elevator control. As you can see, the B-25 has already arrived on the scene. There's two people who have not, in fact, begun to fight. Now... Great thing about this, and where exactly it gets uh, matched up, you'd be fighting a lot of boom and zoomers, meaning that you're going to, uh, your enemies are going to try to use their superior speed and firepower to take you down. Thing is, you can completely outturn them, so just execute a couple of pirouettes and you'll be fine. Theoretically, obviously, I, I'm just going to go and hunt the AI, but it's easy fucking money anyway. But oh, with not a lot of experience. Okay, that's the P-26. The AI in this game isn't really that smart. Not to mention that um, they always get equipped with basic, bi the, the, pretty much the first fighter their their nation can uh, muster. Meaning that for most people, it's uh, biplanes. Since the Americans don't get biplanes in this game, they get pea shooters, which are these things. Aircraft destroyed. What the hell is the other guy? The enemy has taken the initiative. What the hell? Oh, there it is. And the enemy seems to be hiding a bit. You know what? Never mind. This thing does not climb well. Let me let, let me just reiterate that for every single Japanese player out there who uses this as a fucking uh, climber. This thing does not climb well. Do not climb with it. You're wasting time. See if I can. Ah, oh, not gonna. I'm not gonna make it. Not gonna make it. Not really accustomed to cockpit view yet. Not. And I haven't played a lot with it. As you can see, since you're using mouse aim, it doesn't have to sway around a lot. That's a P26. That too is a P26. And there's a friendly biplane right there. Ah, this thing reminds me of Ace Combat. It really does. Yeah, very carefully now. I think that I think it's better if you use this crosshair because it's just fucking cool. Come on. I can't see him. Whoa, there he is. Okay, drop your speed. Because the bad thing about fighting these planes is. They're really, really slow. That's a bad thing when it comes to dogfighting, because they can just drop their speed in an instant. They're just like, oh god, overturn! That's a B-25 Mitchell bomber. Okay, very carefully now. Oh, come on. I can't see anything because the goddamn sun's in the way. Fuck's sake. Stop moving! Ah, there we go, one hit. Are you serious? That was a clean hit. 
And now he's in the way. I'm like, ah, oh, fucking son. You know what? Fuck it. This thing does not have good armaments. And it doesn't have a lot of ammo either. Wow. See? Down to machine guns already. Jesus. Okay, okay. Just die. Are you serious? Just die. Okay, you saw what happened. First of all, if you're gonna go with cockpit view, keep in mind that that is glass. So if you're up if you're up against the sun, you'll be fine. If you're not against the sun, then you're gonna have a lot of glare there. That just fucking sucks. Also, the cannons on this thing are the best. They're not gonna do a lot of damage to anyone. That's that's an issue. Secondly. They don't have a lot of vamoids, so 100, 100 rounds for each of the cannons on each wing, and uh, yeah, try to be a little sparse. And now for the worst part of all, carrier landing. Okay, last I checked, carrier landing was still borked, meaning that even if you did have a tail hook like the Zero does, right there, it wouldn't really matter because it would just not work. The, the wire, the tail, the hook, the, the wire that the tail hook was supposed to attach to would just extend out into the sea and you just fucking die, drowned. You can imagine that carrier landing is surprisingly hard. And all you did was see me um, uh, chase biplanes. I'm really sorry. But you saw the turn rate on this thing. You did. Don't say you didn't, because you did. The turn rate on this thing is just fucking fantastic. Just, okay, just an idea. Combat flaps. Do you see the turn rate on this? Do you? This is me using the elevator controls, obviously, because back then I couldn't use it. I was using the uh, manual mouse aim. Okay, let's just try to land on somewhere. I was using manual mouse aim, which means I had to slightly adjust, because if I just use this, I just turn too much. That's how good this plane is. It can pretty much outturn anything anyone can throw at it, and that's a fantastic thing! Okay, very carefully now, reduce speed. Gear down. Gear down. Landing flaps. Coming in a bit too fast. Carrier landing is really complicated. Probably gonna run a bit too. Oh no, coming a bit, coming too slow. Okay, gear down. This is not gonna work. Not in a million years. See? Missed the tail hook. Mr. Tailhook! Ah! Carrier landing, still borked, impossible to land. At, at, at the way I landed, the tailhook was supposed to grab on. It didn't. It just didn't. That's the point. Gaijin has not fixed carrier landing ever since they implemented it. Essentially, if you ask anyone, oh, what we want. If you ask anyone, they'll tell you the same damn thing. If you want to land on a carrier, aim your wing for the tower, and hope to God you don't get too damaged that the aircraft carrier can't repair you. Otherwise, um, otherwise turn off the uh, instructor and just crash with a wing. That's the only way. It is impossible to land on carriers properly because Gaijin has not fixed it. Okay, never mind. Moving on. I killed two AI biplanes. Zero experience, or very little experience, as you can see here. But hooray, money! Yeah, I got fighter. Hooray, right, twenty-one thousand lions. Woo! Okay, people, that was a zero. Let's reiterate. Pros: This thing is fucking agile. It has a great turn rate, but not a good accompanying roll rate. So what you need to do is use loops and inverted loops to your advantage. People can turn and loop like you can. Loop, and when you're in the middle of a loop, turn in which direction you want to go, then go there. 
If you want to roll, do it when you have time. This plane is not good at lightning quick maneuvers. It is good at turning, but you need to roll to go there. And this thing does not roll that well. Secondly, even with a full tank, this thing is still very agile. Use that to your advantage. If you want to be one of those lamers who just skims around the edge of the map because you don't want to lose and you want to piss everyone off, go ahead, pick the fucking zero. Cons. The armament is not that good. You get two 7.7s that don't do a lot, and two 20mm Mark Tide 99 cannons that aren't exactly that good, at least compared to others. The Americans can do more damage to you with 12.7s than you can with 20mm. This thing is good only if you use short, controlled bursts. Another con, this thing is so fucking fragile. It, is, it has an amazing turn rate precisely because it's very lightweight and very lightly armored. Not to mention, it doesn't have a self-sealing fuel tank. Meaning what? One hit, one spark, kaboosh, whoosh, and everything goes to a fiery hell. Thirdly, this tank cannot be hit once, or else you're going to lose control of the control servers that was hit. One hit in the wing means the wing is now useless. One hit in the elevator means the elevator is now useless, and so forth, and so forth. Con, not a good climber. At all. Con, not a good top speed, however, that leads to not a good top speed, meaning you won't be able to keep up with Americans or Russians, or pretty much anything else for that matter. Oh, excuse me. However, that leads to my final pro, good acceleration, as I'm sure you saw. This thing has a max speed of 519 kilometers per hour. If you go horizontally and hit the afterburner, you can easily get to near 500 without having to go to a dive. Unlike the Spitfire, which just fucking can't approach its maximum speed unless it's diving. So that was all. Thank you for tuning in, and please stay tuned in to the next video where we will fly the Wellington Mark 10 medium bomber torpedo bomber. Goodbye.